Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at St. John's Lutheran Church, whether you're here in person or you're watching online. It's great to have you here, and we have uh, some special treats today from our youth, so that'll be great. I'm Pastor Lynn. Pastor David will be preaching, and we continue our sermon series, Life Stories, or Get Your Acts Together, because we're in the book of Acts in the Bible. So there you go. So let us begin our worship this morning by standing if you're able and we'll join in our opening songs. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for this day, this morning that we just get to praise you, praise your wonderful name together, as we remember your grace and great love given to us through your Son. We ask that you would guide us and show us um, how to, this love and grace to others in the world around us. Help us turn from the ways that harm others and ourselves and lead us in the ways of everlasting for all that you do and all that you are. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
indeed our living hope and it's because of the life death and resurrection of Jesus that we can come before him and ask all of the needs that we have for repentance for confession and so let us join today in a time of confession O oh God of life we confess that too often we focus on the things of death rather than the promise of life in Jesus in our fear and anxiety, we quickly turn from you to ourselves. Our fear leads us to doubt and promise, hurt our relationships, and neglect your creation. Forgive us our sin and daily raise us to new life and empower us by your Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, who has risen from the dead, says to us, do not be afraid. We are an Easter people, and we know that we are washed anew in Christ's rising, and all of our sins are forgiven in his name. Be at peace, grow, and live in the everlasting love of God. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we invite any kids to come forward for a children's time with Pastor. Zoom, 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 zoom. Good morning. We had a good crew this morning. Good deal. There we are. Oh, hey, how are we doing? Good. Excellent. It's a good day. Why is it a good day? Because it's Sunday. Because it's, sun, cause it's what? Sunday. Sunday. That's good. Yes, it's also. Let's sit outside. Is it stormy and gross? It's nice. It's nice outside. You don't have to wear a coat if you don't want to. The sun is nice. It's beautiful outside. But it is Sunday, and we are in church. Why are we in? Why do we do church on Sundays? That's right. Because we celebrate Jesus. Yes. So. Today, Sunday, is a day... Okay, what was the most recent holiday that we celebrated? Somebody who hasn't answered yet. Easter. Easter. Do we like Easter? Easter? What do we like about Easter? Um, I like, I like the Easter egg hunts. You like what? Easter egg hunts. Easter egg hunts. That's always fun. Like and candy. <laughs> what do you like about Easter? 
You like that Jesus died. But he didn't stay there, did he? Nope, he didn't. He rose from the dead. What do you got? Spending time with family. Time with family. All those really good things. So as we celebrate Easter, so here's the thing. Easter wasn't just three weeks ago. What's today? Sunday, but it's also... It's still Easter. Easter lasts 50 days. So I think you need to talk to your parents about more eggs and some more candy. <laughs> you had your fill? <laughs> All right. No, Easter is, Easter is more than just one day. So we already talked about the fact that Jesus died, but he also rose again. The dying part happens to everybody. That's, that's kind of sad. But the rising from the dead, that was kind of new. And that's special. And that's the thing, that's why we worship on Sundays, because Sunday was the day that Jesus rose from the dead. And every single Sunday, even if it's not the season of Easter, is a little tiny Easter every Sunday, because we remember that Jesus rose again for us, for the forgiveness of sins, and gives us a fresh start. How many of you guys need a fresh start? Have you ever had a terrible, no good, very bad day? Mm, me too. Sometimes multiple ones in the same day. Yes. Yep. And, and, and sometimes, you know, does that make you feel awful? Yeah. Yeah. The good news is, you see back there? What's that way back there next to the fire? And the cross. It's, on, it's a big bowl. What is, what's the bowl for? for it's for um, baptism. It's, it's for baptism. And what do we put in the baptismal bowl? Babies. We don't put babies in there. They would fit in some cases. That's a new big bowl. That's really cool. But what do we actually have in the bowl? Water. Water is a good... We need to be reminded. One of the reasons why I have these sermons is we remind ourselves that this is still Easter, that Jesus still rose from the dead, and one of the main things that we use for God's promise is water. Do you, do you have to have water every day? Yeah, you really kind of do. If you want to be healthy at all, you need to drink water every single day in one shape or form or another. Life depends on water. And God uses this thing of water to remind us that Jesus brings us new life and rebirth. Have you ever been outside and you played and you get all mucky and muddy and gross? And then you play take baseball. play baseball. And then you take a shower or take a tubby and you feel clean and relaxed and wonderful. That is the gift of God's forgiveness for us. That's what water reminds us of, that God cleanses us and gives us a new start every single day. And that's why we celebrate Easter every single Sunday and for 50 days after the first Easter. So there, you did a little learning today. You guys are all on track. I think we're in good shape today. So now we got work to do because one of the gifts we get to share with others is peace. So let us, well, got to pray first. Hold our hands. Say, dear God, thank you for the gift of forgiveness, repentance, and water that we may remember your love. Amen. Happy Easter. Good job. All right, let's stand up. Reach out our arms. Everybody else out there, they're all standing up. Excellent. Good work, everybody. And we say, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace this morning. Peace. Peace. You may be seated. It is now time for the reading of our scripture lesson. How's that? Better? Okay, good. The scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over 
and rejected in the presence of Pilate. Though he had decided to release him, but you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this, we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. The cross is empty, but so too is the tomb. He has risen indeed, and God's story keeps going. The resurrection is not just a one-time event. In the waters of our baptisms, we die and rise daily into the ongoing story of life in Jesus. This Easter season, we look at stories from the Book of Acts that show us how the early church celebrated struggled and came to terms with what it means to live life as a resurrection people. These stories continue to shape and inform us as we too seek to get our acts together as we follow the living Christ into the world to share God's grace and life with all. Dear beloved of God, grace and peace are yours in the name of the living Savior, Jesus. Amen. As you have seen, we continue our sermon series called Life Stories as we jump around the book of Acts, which is the history book of the New Testament, and one of the reasons why I like it so much, we see that Jesus' death was not by half the end of the story. It was hardly even the beginning of the story. And as we talked about with the kids, each Sunday we get to celebrate a little Easter as our stories are interwoven with God's bigger story of creative love and grace and mercy in this world. Last week, Pastor Lynn talked about how the early church gathered in community and worked on being a living and breathing example of resurrection life to bring this story into the world in their preaching, and their teaching, and in their sharing and generosity. The question that came to mind for me, though, is, well, what was their message? What was at the heart of their stories? We seem today, anyway, to start our story from Acts kind of in the middle of the story, and then at the end we have this very strange ending. All right, if we take a look up here, how does that sentence end? All you English people, how are you supposed to end a sentence? Not with a. A comma means there's more, yes? All right, there is more. And that perhaps is the best part of the story, that there in fact is more to this story. Our stories are tied in there. And it seemed odd to me a little bit because we even jump into this story a little bit oddly. Let's go back here. Let's take a peek here at the very beginning. When Peter saw it, what did Peter saw? What, it doesn't explain what Peter saw. You actually have to go back into the story again. What did Peter say, and what caused him to preach this sermon? Well, he said it because a spectacular miracle had just occurred right outside the temple. A man that was there who had begged for a living 
because of a physical impairment, was now jumping and shouting for joy. No longer did the people of the city look at him with pity, but looked at him with wide-eyed amazement. He was no longer crippled, but his feet and ankles were strong. He was healed, and he was clinging to Peter and John. And Peter says, don't look at us. His healing is not our doing. This is not our fault, all right? He points towards Jesus. And then he goes through this long list of things that had happened to Jesus to remind them of who Jesus was and what they had done to Jesus. And we could say those same words about ourselves today that put him in that place. But he ends with a piece of good news. He ends with a word that we don't very often perhaps acquaint with good news, but I think really is a word of good news. And that is a sense of repentance, a sense of repentance that flows through our life stories. Peter says these words, repent therefore and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, comma. And the story goes on from there. It's your story, my story, our story together as the body of Christ. We continue to live as we continue to repent. Repenting for many of us, I remember as a small kid, my idea of repenting was somebody standing on a, uh, on a box in a park somewhere waggling their finger at me and screaming at me to repent because I was going to hell otherwise. And I thought, well, I don't know about all that um, because it seemed a little odd. But I think the people who did these readings did this intentionally. And you are free to read the rest of it after the comma in the book of Acts. You have this thing, it's called a Bible. Please look at it. It's awesome, all right? In verses 20 and 21, it'll tell you some of the rest of it. But the repentance that you join in is part of this story as well. Our life stories are part of this story of repentance. So in never to tell another story, one of my favorite stories uh, that helps illustrate a little bit, I think, the sense of repentance. It seems that there was a good old boy who was a church painter in the Midwest. And as you have traveled, if you have traveled any distance at all throughout the Midwest, you will see the countryside dotted very often with these cute little white churches. And this was his specialty. He stocked only white paint. And he was a church painter. And things, things were okay. But, you know, the economy the way it is and the prices of paint were going up, and, and it was getting harder and harder to make a living. And while he had a couple of bids that he was uh, working on, it was getting, getting kind of tight. Um, and he was sitting there com- thinking about this one day as he was getting ready for a job, and he looked down at the, the, the candy bar he was eating and noticed it was a little smaller than normal and looked at the wrapper. They used to be four ounces, and this one was 3.2 ounces. Shrinkflation. Mm -hmm. Didn't like that very much. But then he had an idea. He had an idea how to make things go a little further. So he decided to thin down his latex paint a little bit with water. Maybe a little extra water. Maybe a little too much water. Hard to say. So he set up at St. John's of the Prairie out there, and he went to work using half the amount of paint that he normally would. And everything went great. The coverage was good, the weather was beautiful, and before you knew it, he had painted the entire church. And standing on the scaffolding, having finished up the steeple, he admired his handiwork and his cunning. You'd never be able to tell that he used half the paint that he normally should have used for a job like this. And with a smirk on his face and thoughts of the profit margin that he'd have, he was about to start packing up when suddenly a huge dark cloud rolled in and with a tremendous clap of thunder, a bolt of lightning came out of the sky and our painter was flung to the ground where he watched the rain come down in sheets and in turn the thin paint was washed right off the church. Lying there, amongst the tombstones of the church graveyard and surrounded by milky white puddles. The painter cried out, Oh God, forgive me! What shall I do? And a voice like rolling thunder came to him and said, Repaint, repaint, and thin no more! (laughs) I love that story. I love that story. 
And honestly, the more I learn about the word repent, the more I really appreciate that word as well. As I mentioned, when I thought I was younger, there's very much a sense of judgment in that word. But that, and it does carry a little bit of that with it. It does cause us to wake up and, and look around. But that is just the very tip of a beautiful, beautiful iceberg. The word that we translate as repent is a Greek word known as metanoia. Metanoia is the, in a noun form, is the, the sense of a journey of changing one's mind, one's heart, one's self, one's way of life. And the verb form is the act of reforming, of becoming a new creature in God. It is not about keeping on doing the same old, same old, although sometimes we're prone a little to that. Repentance is a journey. It begins work in Jesus Christ to new life. Because in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are invited to return to God over and over again, to connect, to receive grace, mercy, and forgiveness, and to change our lives, to begin this journey of metanoia. For the early church, yes, the resurrection was crucial. In the gospel lesson appointed for today, Jesus shows up and has lunch with them. It's a huge deal. But then at the very end of the Gospel of Luke for this day, as well as our lesson from Acts today, the word repent or repentance is crucial. It's what Jesus wants us to preach. He wants us to talk about this change, this sense of promise of new life in his name. And because forgiveness is at the very center of repentance. We need repentance often because we are prone to wander off. The maker of this banner, I told that joke 24 years ago for the first time. And the lady who made this banner was so tickled by it, she couldn't get it out of her head for weeks on end. She was ahead of our quilters and also a very crafty person. So she found a little extra felt and she made this banner, which I have kept ever since as a prized possession. Nancy was a wonderful church woman. She was a servant. She was loving and caring. She also had a tendency to find herself, mm, well, she had a penchant to stir things up occasionally. (laughs) Often, a lot, actually. Uh, And then she'd find herself in the middle of a storm and wouldn't know why she ended up there. This was a woman who had lived through a very blessed life and a very struggle life. Her parents had health issues. Her husband had moved them all over the country numerous times, but yet in the act of repentance, of returning to God over and over again, she saw God's life and promise in Jesus Christ. And that's why she loved the joke not so much. Not just because it's a great pun, but because of the truth that God calls us to repent over and over again. I could tell other stories, but one of the stories that came up to my mind this week was I was teaching our Thrive students. Junior high kids are a treat. Let me tell you, if you've never had the option to teach them, it's something. Um, And this week we were talking about the subject of anger, and this is a subject that they know very well at 12 and 13 years old, Um, especially if you're a teacher. God bless you. and in, in every time we start talking about healthy anger, about how healthy anger is not self-centered, self-focused, it seeks the best in others, and it, it, it seeks to, to build up on that kind of stuff. Every time we'd get there, they would go off on a tangent about how this substitute teacher was mean, or how this happened here, or it was very much self-centered very often. So we're trying to get back to the sense of healthy anger that leads to health and grace and all that kind of stuff. But again, every time we got close, they veered off. And it's a good thing that the next two sessions of Thrive are about forgiveness because they're going to need to learn that because it's crucial to our lives as Christians. It's not about get you and got you and getting it right. It's about living this life of repentance, about returning to God. It's it's like the story of the prodigal son where God is the father standing there with open arms waiting for the son to return. This is the promise of repentance. This is the promise of of forgiveness. In another story that I told uh, uh, teaching uh, junior high kids, uh, we were at the end of the year, and as an illustration, when I was teaching about repentance, I talked about repentance being a 180 degree turn, and back when my knees were better and I had more of a vertical, I would jump up in the air and I'd spin around and I would face the cross. So in old man slow motion version, it went like this. This, 
This is repentance. It's returning to God. You return to the cross. The cross is central for us. And over and over again, I would do that, and I'd jump up. So we're getting near the end of the year, and we're doing a review, and I said, can anybody tell me what repentance is? And Brian, who was not generally very talkative, um, threw his arm up in the air with great gusto and says, I know, I know, I know. He was all excited about this. And I said, all right, Brian, lay it on us. And he jumped up, and I kid you not, did a full 360-degree turn landing right back where he was at the beginning. It was a fantastic jump, but he got it wrong. <laughs> but he also got human nature very right, all right? The good news was he got the sense of what repentance is about. He got the essence of it. But the problem is, is that very often we repent and we turn towards God and we say we're sorry and then we keep going back this way and then we find ourselves going our own direction again. This is life for human beings. Very often we realize our need for God, for change, for God's love and grace. But too often we don't stop at 180 degrees. We find ourselves going back in the direction away from God again. And the problem is, is that we are not likely to reach our desired destination of peace and grace and love by traveling faster in the wrong direction. But here's the good news. This is the good news of repentance because it's the word that Jesus preached. It's the word that John the Baptist preached. It is a word that is throughout the Old Testament as well that God desires deeply for us to return and will be there waiting for us. In both the reading from Acts and the Gospel of Luke, as I mentioned for this day, living life knowing that Jesus Christ has accomplished this for us, this gift of forgiveness, this gift of life, and asks us to return to God, to remember. As I mentioned with the kids, it's why we use water in baptism. And Martin Luther, in the midst of his Reformation, when things were not going well, put up a list of 95 theses. And us Lutherans are very proud of that. Almost no Lutherans actually know what any of the 95 theses are, but we're very proud of the fact that he put them on the castle door. But here's one for you to know this day. This is the first of the 95 theses. This is the topic sentence for Martin Luther and everything that came afterward. He wrote, when our Lord and Master Jesus Christ said repent, he intended that the entire life of believers should be one of repentance. Repentance is not condemnation. Repentance is returning to God. Repentance is living in the fullness of God's grace. Repentance is life in Jesus' name. That is what Martin Luther was all about. This first of the 95 theses nails that on the head and said this is important. This is the central part of the good news of Jesus Christ because he saves sinners, sinners like you and me. And it is not a one-time event. As I mentioned again, it's no accident that God chose water for baptism. We need water every day, and we're reminded, and we need to be reminded, of God's saving grace on the regular because we too often forget. Sometimes we forget because life comes at us pretty hard sometimes, and it can be bumpy. There's a great Japanese proverb, Nana Korobi Yaoki. I, am, I don't speak uh, Japanese. I found that on the internet, so if I'm wrong, go figure it out. But it looks like this, and it says this in English. Fall down seven times, get up eight. This is the sense of repentance. Do we want to fall down seven times? No. But the falling down is not the point. It is the getting back up that is. It is that sense of repentance, to live a life of repentance. We may be stubborn or slow to learn, or we may fail intentionally, or we may do things accidentally that go against God's will. But in God's grace in Jesus Christ, God is always there for us. In our post-Easter world, in our post-Easter stories, as we live into this grace of God in Jesus Christ, the other part of the good news is we never do this alone. We are not alone in Christ. We are given the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are given the gift of a community of faith that gathers to worship and sing praises to God, to be with us in all things. We are brought together as the children of God in this place. We have these gifts to share. 
We partner with others in our community to bring good things, to bring this promise of life, to offer God's warm embrace and repentance as we tell our stories of faith as the people of God that are St. John's. Over and over again, we are called to repent. Over and over again, our stories grow. Over and over again, God is there for us in Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Good and loving God, we give you thanks for all your mercies. As we learn the lessons of life, as we seek to do your will, you are there for us. You have provided for us in community. And while it is not all about us, you have done all of this for us and for all your children. Bless us as we seek to live our stories of grace, mercy, and repentance in this world today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed, I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed. so very blessed in so many ways uh, that we give thanks to God. We uh, had our big church garage sale this other day. Thank you for all those who brought in your junk, for all those who arranged the junk, for those who bought the junk. Um, awesome. 
Uh, great return on that, and we have lots of uh, wonderful opportunities for ministry as a result of that as well. A lot of hands that went into helping put that together, so thank you so very much. It is one of the great things that we do in this community that we understand that we are not in this alone, that we are blessed to share this ministry and to do this thing called life together as Christians. Let's give a word of thanks to God for all the good gifts that we receive this day. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite you to stand at this time as together we use the words of the Apostles' Creed to confess our faith together. We confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and any in need of good news. Jesus, you forgive all. Help us as we struggle with the choices in our lives. Be with us as we face sin and the sin within our institutions and world. May we trust that you will be with us through our turning around and repenting. God of grace, beloved one, be with all those in relationships, especially those who have promised their lives to each other. We pray for Tristan Humbles and Aoife Lay, who were married here yesterday. God of grace, Holy Spirit, we pray for all who are grieving loss especially Carol Wabel and family upon the death of her husband, David. God of grace, healing God, please give health to those who need your tender care. This week we pray for, especially for Bob, Karen, and Irma. Grant them patience and strength. God of grace, it is into your hands, most merciful God, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup, he blessed it, he poured it out for his disciples to drink and he said, this cup is the new covenant, my blood which has been shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Let us join our hearts and voices together as we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Here at St. John's, we practice an open communion, meaning that all may come forward at the direction of the ushers. 
You will receive um, a wafer. Please hold it in your hands, and then you may dip it into the dark-colored wine or the light-colored grape juice. We also have gluten-free options available as well as the sealed communion kits. So come, this is the feast of God for the people of God.
storms are raging all around your mighty cross your precious blood will keep me safe within the flood nothing in all this world i know can separate of clay and breaking forth from brokenness there comes a power not from us so I will boast though it seems wrong for when I meet that I am strong now taking up my cross I Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and you have fed us with your love. In all that is to come, may we proclaim your goodness and share in the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Just a couple of announcements before we bless you on your way today. Thank you for joining us for worship. It's been great to, to be with you today. Uh, a couple of real quick things. Yes, the, the, the garage sale was great. Thank you again for all the folks that helped out with that. Just a tremendous, tremendous uh, thing. And for a guy who likes other people's junk, sometimes it was fun. Um, so a couple other things uh, to keep on your agenda. The front of the news, of course, is for our VBS. Please keep that in mind for either registrations for youth and or for being able to step up and help out with that. That would be fantastic. Also, you'll notice in my column on the inside, there's a, um, a survey uh, that we want to fill out. The Senate is putting this out just to get a better sense of how people know and what they feel about the Senate and what they could do better and help direct us um, in, in putting together a mission and vision statement for the Senate to do a better job of being that uh, part of the church for us. Um, I'd like you to do that. We have 350, uh, as of yesterday morning, people who have completed it, 11 from St. John's, which puts us in fourth place, and I'm a little competitive. So um, also, if we get to 500, the bishop gets a pie in the face. So there's a winner there, too. Also, and better than that, is ELCA World Hunger will get a $2,000 grant if we hit our 500 uh, people. So if you're able to fill out that thing, that would be awesome and take you a few minutes. The address is in there. And then also probably something a little bit more productive for yourselves. Personally, coming up, we have a prayer workshop. You can find out more information about that. And we're also doing our instruction for communion. Uh, they'll be doing the hands-on stuff today, and we'll have two Wednesdays of classes, and on the 28th, we'll have a special celebration of uh, the communion at that time. So all that and more is in the news. So find a way that you can connect and be Christ for others in this world. So I invite you to stand at this time and receive your blessing. May the God who stands with open arms to receive you Bless you and keep you as you repent and turn into his loving arms today and always. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
peace, rejoice, and be glad. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.